Indeed not, Emily. If you look behind me, you might be able to make out a giant American flag uh, suspended from two cranes. Under that, somewhere, is the stage from which Joe Biden is due to speak. Sometime tonight, we are told, in prime time. That's in a couple of hours' time, presumably. But we just don't know what he's going to say. As you say, it all depends on what news comes out of those battleground states that Mark was talking about, of Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona. Does he get enough tonight to plausibly claim victory? Although he spent the day at home with his friends and family, we are told that he's been reaching out to former colleagues in the Senate, Republicans trying to line up some support across the aisle for the point at which the election is declared. If it comes in his favour, as his team increasingly suspect, he wants those Republicans to come out and declare that the election is in fact legitimate, it was fair, it wasn't fraudulent. He thinks an important part of moving the country forward is to isolate the president in his claims of fraud. All, and really, that's actually been happening today. Several Republican senators have come out and distanced themselves from President Trump's baseless claims last night that the Democrats are seeking to steal the election through fraud. Uh, Senator Pat Toomey, from that battleground state of Pennsylvania, said he thought the president's comments were, quote, very disturbing. Meanwhile, the president himself is apparently increasingly livid with the lack of support that he's been getting. His legal team has been sent out to gather evidence of that fraud that so far has not been forthcoming. And sources close to the president are saying that no one has ever had the conversation with him about how he should behave, what he should do, were he to lose. It's been a closed subject. Another problem is he's running out of funds. His campaign has run dry. He set up an appeal for a legal fighting fund. It's been another extraordinary day in American politics and one that's largely gone in the direction of Joe Biden. For this divided country, one more division. We're not going to let them steal it. Pennsylvania. Those who think the election has by and large been fair and those who don't. The president appears increasingly unlikely to be re-elected and last night made wild allegations about the process. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. Many networks simply cut him off. We were, we're watching uh, President Trump speaking live from the White House, and, and we have to interrupt here because the president has uh, made a number of uh, false statements. We're interrupting this because what the president of the United States is saying, in large part, is absolutely untrue. A stark example of what appears to be power ebbing. As mail-in ballots continue to be processed and counted, Joe Biden overtook Mr. Trump in Georgia, a state which hasn't voted for a Democrat for president since Bill Clinton. However, there are more votes to come, and the Secretary of State of Georgia confirmed there will now be a recount. Good morning, everyone. Out of approximately 5 million votes cast, we'll have a margin of a few thousand. With a margin that small, there will be a recount in Georgia. From Georgia to Pennsylvania. Major, major development right now. Take a look at this. Uh, Biden, 49.4%. Trump, 49.3%. With Joe Biden having... This was enough for the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, to make her own premature declaration. Pretty soon the hyphen will be gone from Vice President to President-elect Joe Biden. In Delaware, Joe Biden has been a frequent diner at Angelo's Luncheonette. There I met John Flaherty, who spent 16 years working in Joe Biden's Senate office. I don't think you're going to find anybody uh, in the White House who is more prepared than Joe Biden. He has a history of reaching out and talking to people that are diametrically opposed to what he stands for. And I think that's a real positive attribute. It's not an attribute in some of the primaries because it's, it's so polarized on the edges. But he was able to survive those primaries. In the back of the luncheonette amongst the Elvis memorabilia is a poster of Joe Biden's first presidential run. 32 years later, it looks like he might have made it. David Gossman there. Well, joining us now, Mick Mulvaney, former White House chief of staff to Donald Trump. Soon we're going to be joined by Bob Casey, the uh, 
senior senator for the crucial state of Pennsylvania you're just hearing about. Mick Mulvaney, I wonder what you make of uh, people from your own side, whether it's Pat Toomey saying it's very hard to watch the president's words last night, or Mike DeWine, the Ohio governor, saying we as a country accept election results, or John Bolton saying we're facing a character test. Is it hard to listen to the president um, make a speech like the one he made last night? Keep in mind, John Bolton and the president famously don't get along, so you can throw that one out. But to your point about watching the speech last night, look, I watched the speech last night along with everybody else, and I heard the president say if we count the legal votes, he's going to win. If they don't, he's got a chance to lose. I'm willing to believe that. Uh, I just need to see evidence at some point. At some point, you have to, to put up or shut up. We've all heard the anecdotal evidence. I've been receiving it all day about dead people voting, about people voting in the wrong state, about people voting voting multiple times. So we hear the anecdotes, but anecdotes don't cut it. At some point, yeah. you have to present data, you have to make legal arguments, and it, we're approaching the time where the Trump, the campaign needs to start uh, putting down hard facts as opposed to allegations. Right. I mean, you, you're on the same side, it sounds like, then, as the, as the senior Republicans I just quoted. He hasn't no, got the evidence, no, no, has he? No, no, he no, hasn't. I, I, well, he, yeah. he hasn't. I'm not on the same side as John Bolton. I mean, John Bolton said it's a question of character. Again, that, that's, that's not the question. I think all Republicans are willing to still admit there's a chance the president wins. Pennsylvania's not lost yet. George's not lost yet. I still think he's going to win Arizona, which will dramatically change the, uh, the count so far. But at some point, we need to see the facts and not just the allegations. Yeah, uh, because th there is a sense now, isn't there, amongst the, pub uh, the Republican Party, uh, and he was calling out yesterday, uh, Eric Trump and Giuliani was saying, where's the GOP now? That they're actually moving away from him because somebody's probably got to tell him that without evidence, you can't keep making these kind of allegations and you can't keep jumping in and trying to create uh, a legal um, contortion where you haven't got facts to back it up. I mean, he just tweeted and he said um, that Joe Biden shouldn't wrongfully claim the office of president. Now, that's something that Joe Biden has very carefully not done. He's just said we have to carry on counting the votes. And Donald Trump is the one who said, stop counting, stop counting, right? Again, the lawyers are going to be telling him that. There's, it's completely legitimate under our system to bring legal challenges, just as it is legal and legitimate, excuse me, to do recounts, which look like they're going to happen in most of these not states. Not in every obviously. state, though. Come on, not in every state. And not when you've are already you? sent out a warning weeks ago that as excuse soon as the polls were second. closing, you'd call the if lawyers. I my, if I could finish my answer, uh, it doesn't have to be in every single state, but you're going to have one, obviously, in Georgia. There's laws on how to, count, how to do recounts in states like Arizona yeah. and Pennsylvania. And yes, you are looking just, at recounts in most of these states. I, I just wonder, who is, who is by his side, do you think, that is prepared to say to him, look, you did a great job, you won four years ago, you brought brand new people into the party, but it's time to go, and that there is a time for graciousness. And we saw it from Hillary Clinton four years ago, we saw it from John McCain when he lost, we saw it from George H. Bush when he lost. There is a, there is a moment for grace, and presumably somebody needs to have that conversation with the president. Yeah, I, I'm not sure Hillary Clinton would qualify as graciousness uh, and the way she's handled she the wished him well. last year. But to she, your she point... She wished him well and uh, she conceded, yeah. The, the inner circle at this point would be most likely when it comes to the president, the family. It would be his adult children, uh, the first lady, and some of his very closest uh, business friends and associates. That would be the folks that he's turning to uh, for, the, for advice in this very critical time to answer your question. Let's talk to Senator Bob Casey. I, I think the, the problem is, Bob Casey, is that everyone is sort of acting like this is a done deal. And the point that Mick Mulvaney made is it, it isn't actually a done deal, right? I mean, you. How confident is the Biden team now that it's all over? Well, I'll just speak from my perspective. I, I know I've won six statewide elections in Pennsylvania, so I know a good bit about the state. And here's the reality. Joe Biden's ahead now in Pennsylvania. His lead will continue to grow. It's inexorable. In terms of the mail-in ballots, um, he's going to have he's going to have a lead that I think will be substantial enough for a determination about when networks or news organizations make a call, but the, the, that lead uh, will also grow. So by the time there's an official count, and that is always later and the number is always higher, 
Um, yeah. I believe, based upon the, the data I've seen and folks whose data crunching uh, I trust, uh, that, that the margin will be either north or south of 100,000 votes, which would be um, well above the 44,292 the president won by. And that was his official uh, the, number. The the million dollar question, uh, Senator, because you're right in the heart of things. Um, you wouldn't have any sense of timing on that, would you? Because I think from about nine o'clock this morning, uh, when Joe Biden looked as if he was taking the lead, everyone's been on that knife edge, but it's not clear, right? Well, the, I think part of the problem was since this morning, the, the counting slowed down for all kinds of reasons. Um, but that that's just part of the process. Um, I don't know when when there'll be a margin that will be high enough for, for people to think that it's, it's reached the point of making a determination yeah. about the race. But, um, but I, I, I have no I, doubt he's going to win, and I have no doubt that it'll be uh, when all the counting is done in that range. Um, I don't know if you heard it, from uh, Mick Mulvaney a few moments ago, but uh, the, the, the fact is that Donald Trump made a speech last night, um, which certainly some on his own side and maybe half the country, i.e. the people who voted for him, will have taken at face value. So I, I, I wonder what any future Joe Biden presidency does with that. Well, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what a, a new administration does with that, other than in the, in the near term. I think we have to be very clear what the responsibilities are of a president. Um, he has an obligation to make statements and to conduct himself uh, and to propose uh, uh, to propose policies and, and ideas that are consistent with respecting the will of the American people when they vote. Uh, and also has to make it very clear that he will um, comply with the peaceful transfer of power. So far, he hasn't been willing to do any of the kind. And when he engages in the kind of behavior we saw yesterday and the statements he made yesterday, it's not only undermining uh, the right to vote, it's not only undermining democracy, uh, it under undermines our national security. The only one who benefited from that statement yesterday was Vladimir Putin and also the, you know, the other enemies of America all over the world. So it's time Let for the president to, to, to be very clear about respecting the will of the people and he can still pursue legal action with with um, with evidence but he has no evidence he just wants to to uh, to, to complain about the election there was quite a hardcore response from the the, the Joe Biden campaign saying uh, we will remove trespassers um, from the White House if we need to suggesting that what he would be forcibly ejected if, if there isn't a smooth transfer of power? I mean, what, what, what do they have in mind? Look, all I know is we have a constitution. And at some point um, in the life of a public official, um, there comes a time when that individual is either going to walk alongside with the constitution and support it, or he's going to try to stand in the way. And in this case, uh, the Constitution will just roll over uh, the president if he continues to engage in this, uh, this, this conduct and make these statements. He can litigate this if he wants, but if, if you litigate, you have to have facts and proof and persuasive legal arguments. We'll see if he comes up with that. But right now, he's got nothing, especially when it comes to Pennsylvania. He doesn't know the first thing about what happens in Philadelphia or any other place. He has no facts to to smear the people of Philadelphia and thereby smear every election official in, in the entire United States of America. Bob Casey, thank you very much, Mick Mulvaney. Thanks for joining us a little earlier.